What's up guys, welcome back to another episode. Today we are gonna be replacing the Vanos unit uh, on our M3. The car, like I said, has 200,000 miles on it, so uh, it's about time. Um, and we'll get into this a little bit later, but I did download a really cool app that's accurate. Um, that'll kind of give you, um, you know, um, somewhat of a baseline for a, a dyno without actually having to take your car to the dyno. And to be honest with you, I'm not so much using it to measure the horsepower and the torque per se, uh, but what I wanna see is we'll take a percentage of um, the difference between the average of the first run stock, and then we'll do another three runs with the new Vanos unit pulled in and just see percentage-wise how much we improve. Um, so yeah, so this is not really gonna be a how-to video. Um, I'm just gonna just start diving into this and banging it out. Uh, there's a ton of videos out there that you guys can watch on how to rebuild these units how to swap them. Uh, but what we do have is we have our new Vanos unit. This was purchased off eBay, off a seller. His name is Beamer Baron, I believe. I'll double check that. Uh, but we'll definitely put a link in the description below. He's local to New Jersey, um, and he actually offers a lifetime warranty on these, which is great. And they're very affordable um, compared to these other sites where you get these units pre-rebuilt uh, pre and sent to you in this form. We also have a gasket that's gonna uh, seal the back of this, the Vanos unit. Uh, these rubber grommets uh, are for the valve cover gasket here. And it's also good practice just to replace the valve cover gasket itself. When you do this, uh, it looks like we have a little bit of RTV in here. So we're gonna pop that off, clean it up really nice and, uh, and seal it up with a new gasket. But uh, one thing I will show you guys how to do is um, how to test the Vanos solenoid itself. Um, because if this isn't functional, then this unit here, your Vanos unit itself is not going to be functional. Um, you can reuse it if it's good, if it goes bad on you in the future, after you've already done the replacement, it's super easy to just crack loose and then just spin it right from the top. I don't even think you have to take any of the beauty covers off. Um, so easy access. But anyway, let me show you guys how we're going to take care of that. Okay. So once your solenoid is unthreaded, you're going to see a little rubber grommet. It's going to be filled with oil. So you just want to just give it a little, little wipe down here with your rag. Okay. Um, you can use a car battery. Uh, I actually have, uh, it's a tattoo machine power supply and, uh, I have it set to 13 volts. Um, I tried to test it on a lower voltage just to see if I'd get any movement. Um, you really need it in between uh, 12 and 13 volts just to even get this thing to move. Um, so what we're doing is we have our connectors here with our alligator clips. And then this is connected to our clip cord. Uh, polarity doesn't matter. And then what we'll do is we're going to just hook up our alligator clips uh, right inside here. Okay, now when I depress the pedal on the power supply, we should see this little rod right here push forward. And there we go, okay? And then that'll just go back in with your finger. And it actually, um, if, you, if you're holding it, you can, you can feel it's pretty powerful. And as long as there's uh, power applied, you can't push this thing back in. But the second you release the power, you can reset it right back, okay? So we know this is good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand this up. Uh, we're gonna hit it with a, a coat of paint just to uh, make it look a little bit nicer. And we'll put this off to the side to dry and we will start tearing this apart. Venus unit is out finally. Um, I think we're going to call it here for the night and then we'll get back on it tomorrow because I got a lot of cleaning inside here to do. And um, yeah, and then we'll get back to reassembly. Uh, I think so far I'm finding that the hardest part of this was to get it to top dead center because you have such a hard time seeing that there's a hash mark underneath here on the, on the uh, crank pulley. Uh, so I got it close. I threw the cam blocks in on the back, wiggled them into place, 
And then there's also, uh, I believe it's a flywheel locking tool um, or crankshaft locking tool that goes into the back just below the starter. I wiggled it again, I got that in. Um, my two front cam lobes here on a nice 45, uh, which is what you're looking for. Um, and everything lined up. So it's a top dead center. That was a challenge. Um, we're gonna eliminate the secondary air pump vacuum uh, line as well. I just have to chase it back here. But like I said, we're gonna cover this up, get it all cleaned up, and we're gonna call it for the night. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Morning guys, the next day we're getting back on the Banos unit today. So we're gonna reassemble. Uh, we got everything cleaned up. We have all our hardware ready to go and painted. And we have all of our coil packs and associated hardware and spark plugs lined up in order. Valve covers cleaned, beauty covers are cleaned. And yeah, so we're gonna get to start reassembling this and um, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so before we go any further, I just want to go through the app that I downloaded. It's called Perf Expert. You can kind of see I'm scrolling through the menu here. Um, very in depth. And uh, what's going to happen is you're going to start with a baseline, um, curb weight, displacement, fuel type, etc., drag coefficient. You have to enter your final drive of your uh, rear end differential uh, and each one of your gears. In my case, five speed manual. Right there is uh, averages of three poles we made. This is just an example. So we're in stock form. Looks like we have 207 on the horsepower and wheel. And then we get down to our dyno graph here. It's pretty neat because you can kind of scroll back and forth and see where your peak uh, torque is and your peak horsepower is, just to give you a little comparison. Like I said, we're really not going for too much accuracy and trying to get the numbers, um, but more of an average and a percentage of different modifications that we may do in the future. This is kind of an example of how you run through the dyno itself. You can choose your gear, how many miles per hour, your fuel level, cargo, the weather conditions, and also the weight of the, the driver, and if you have any additional passengers. You simply hit the start button here, you wait, you can roll out in first, and as soon as you shift into second, I set my starting RPM at 2500, it'll detect it, and you go ahead and make your pull all the way through the red line. And you wanna do this uh, any anything over three times, uh, just to get an average. And yeah, like I said, really cool app. So I'm excited to see where we end up at the end of the video after the Venus is installed. So the Vanos is in, everything's buttoned up. We're gonna go take this for a quick test drive, just double check for any leaks. And uh, yeah, you guys can see um, all the hardware got painted up. Looks much more clean in here. A little RTV on the front portion, as well as the back. But yeah, everything went together fairly easily. You had to play with the Vanos to wiggle it in, but uh, 
yeah, I'm gonna get this off the, uh, the ramps and uh, we'll take it for a test drive, see how she does. Okay, so you can see our averages for our test runs after we put the Vanos in. Um, picked up a lot uh, of horsepower. Um, not too noticeable. Uh, I could feel a little bit more at the lower end, but you can kind of see here we're at 224 at the crank and it looks like 190 uh, at the rear wheels. Um, so this is our best run, just to give you guys an example. And there, there's the, uh, the graph right there. Um, so if we compare it to our other one, we can kind of see that we're hitting peak horsepower and torque at a little bit higher in the rev range. Um, also, we uh, gained about 18 horsepower and 12 foot-pounds of torque overall. So yeah, a lot of benefits to doing this. Very cost-effective. Uh, you're looking at around $200 all said and done to replace everything. And... Um, you know, you're looking at a good gain in horsepower, uh, fuel economy. Um, this is just something that you have to do to maintain your vehicle, to bring it up to factory specifications. I highly recommend it. Um, but overall, uh, very pleased. Um, another feather in the cap, learning something new with the vehicle, kind of understand how it works a little bit better, um, how it, how the, the vehicle is timed, and um, yeah. I'm pretty pleased with the results. You can see that uh, this is our peak old result right here. So you can see a noticeable jump in power. All right, guys, thanks so much for sticking with me. Um, I really wanted to illustrate the before and after of the installation of the Vanos unit um, uh, power-wise. So uh, thank you to uh, Perf Expert. Um, it's a great app. Uh, I love it so far. We're not endorsing this by any means, but uh, you know, something for you car guys to just uh, take a look at. For $9.99, why not give it a whirl, you know? Um, so anyway, guys, uh, almost 19 horsepower increase on the Vanos unit, 12.5 uh, foot-pounds of torque increase. Awesome bang for your buck. Get the car back to specification. Get it running how it's supposed to be running. And, um, yeah, anybody can do it. Common hand tools. Uh, there's a million videos out there for you guys to check out. Jump on the forums, check those out. There's a lot of good information out there. I used it personally myself to perform this. Um, it's not something that you should just go about willy-nilly. So do a little bit of research before you get into it. But anyway, guys, thank you so much again for sticking with me. Please give this video a like. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. All the information will be in the link below. And we'll see you again soon. Thanks so much.